This episode has some amazing content, huh? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the first episode of the miniseries Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers, as well as the 146th episode overall, titled Alien Rangers of Aquatar Part 1. We begin this episode pretty much where we left off. Everyone is a child, screaming. Billy says their communicators aren't working because they're supposed to be tied to their powers, which don't exist. Also, remember how Zed, Rita, and company were giant before? Yeah, they still are, blowing up buildings. Meanwhile, a police officer comes up, screaming into a megaphone that everyone needs to clear the area and return home, like that's going to help everything getting blown up. Then Rita blows up more buildings, and of course, Aisha has to know that those were the abandoned warehouses. Tommy then says that they have to get to the command center on foot, so the six run away. This is kind of bleak, huh? Meanwhile, Rito finds an antenna on a building that he uses to clean his teeth with, while the rest of the villains talk about how awesome it is to be destroying things. Like, we get it guys, get on with it. Then suddenly, they are shrunk back to human size, and in the sky, Master Vile appears, yelling at them because if they keep doing things without approval, they're going to ruin everything. Then he teleports the rest of them away while Rito runs away, and he somehow dodges his teleportation. Whatever, Rito asks for permission to get the ranger's power coins, who he sees walking away. The kids are walking down an alleyway when Billy says that he thinks that they're going the right way, but it's hard to remember because everything looks so different since they're allegedly in the past. I don't think there was a major construction in the last six years, guys, but alright. Then Bulk and Skull come running up and Kat's poor child actress struggles to say anything with an Australian accent, and honestly, they kind of should have just made her mute at this point. Bulk and Skull say that they know who Billy is, but they have no idea who the rest of the kids are, and Aisha brings up a good point. Literally none of the other ones lived there back then. And Billy says they only remember everything because their minds seem to have just retained everything from the point of the Earth's reversal because of the power coins. Then the kids just walk away from Bulk and Skull who end up following them. Rito shows up in front of them and they yell, run, and Bulk and Skull trail behind. Are you ready for some shenanigans? If not, sorry. Tommy and Cat literally toss trash cans at their assailants before Rito ends up jumping up on a trash can, rolling around and falling over. Then Billy, Rocky, Bulk, and Skull see a seesaw made out of a giant plank of wood, and Rito ends up on the other end, and they send him flying into a shopping cart. And the Tangos try to stop him from going downhill, but it hits the wall anyways. This sucks. Then Adam and Aisha home alone the crap out of some Tangos by swinging an iron beam down from a string? This is the worst, especially because, like, where the hell did they even get that? Also, how did they get onto a fire escape? Then Aisha gives a flying tanga some flowers, which makes it stop flying, so they fall? Also, some tangas literally chase Tommy and Cat into a door. God damn it. All of them except Tommy and Cat regroup, and they hide behind a car, and Bulk and Skull run for the police coming around the corner. Rito and the tangas leave, and Tommy and Cat come up, but Billy tells them to stay there because the cop is now telling the other kids to come get in the cop car. How is she going to fit six children into that car legally? On the moon, Rito and the Tangas show up and they make fun of him for losing to a bunch of children, which is fair. Then Master Vile says that he's going to give Rito and Goldar an implosion device that will be placed at the base of the command center, wiping out the morphing grid and Zordon forever. He's also going to assemble a monster conference to get things in order. The cop then talks to Billy, Rocky, Aisha, and Adam about how they're out after curfew, even though it's like a solid 11 a.m. outside. They tell them to get in the car, and Aisha says they're making a big mistake, and they tell them how they're the Power Rangers, and yeah, they're literally all in a pile in the car driving away. Tommy and Kat decide to get to Zordon and Alpha. At the police station, Bulk and Skull are getting taken away by their presumed mothers, while we see that the other four Ranger kids are sitting eating ice cream with cop caps on, and Aisha complains that they're being treated like little kids. And Rocky points out that they are kids. The phone rings, and the officer at the front takes off his thick glasses before he answers. On the phone, it's Kat saying that she's Billy's mom, and she agrees to come in to pick them up. Tommy tells her not to worry, and they walk off. On the moon, a lot of Season 3 monsters are there, and Finster struggles to take attendance. Vile says he just needs the five most fearsome, so he's waiting on his general, Professor Longnose, to arrive because he is currently conquering a dark galaxy star, and will meet them at the quarry. Newsflash, a dark galaxy is called that because it has no stars. They decide to move out in the name of killing Zordon. We also see that Goldar and Rito are ready to leave with their implosion device. Billy begs the cop to just let them leave, and the cop says that his mom just called, so she'll be there to get them soon, and the cop, who doesn't have his glasses on, sees Billy's mom, a child cat who is on Tommy's shoulders. 
They then leave and the cop sees Tommy's shoes and for some reason he thinks that's the only weird part here. The kids are walking through the desert and they complain about getting sand in their eyes and as it turns out, Rito and Golder are following them so that they can get to the command center. Zoran and Alpha are freaking out because their power is out and Zoran says that they have to remember what they were doing at that moment in time to fix the situation. And then Alpha finds the cords of a vacuum because he literally was spring cleaning. So he had to unplug the main control panel to do so. What the hell? When did this show turn into a terrible sitcom? Also, Alpha, that looks nothing like a vacuum. Alpha plugs back in the panel and they see the ranger kids walking and they teleport them into the command center right away. Tommy begs Zordon for some power so they can get their things together to fight Zed, but he says that they're not able to do that because essentially, if they die, it'll hurt the chances of things getting put back into the way that they were. Makes sense if you don't consider all the people that were killed in those buildings that weren't abandoned before. Then Alpha suggests that the alien rangers from the planet Aquatar could come. And it's just talked about so damn casually that like this is a thing that the audience should know about. I mean, at least Aisha is like, um, what? Zoran then says that they live on a planet residing entirely in water. But they also live in pods or something so they could be like fine or whatever. Then Rocky says, remember Edenoi? Dex needed our help and we were there, which is shocking because I definitely thought we completely forgot about that three-parter. Also, I want Kat to say, no, I wasn't there. Zoran tells Alpha to prepare a galactic alert mission to send to the people of Aquatar, and the command center starts shooting a green light out into space, going to another planet, where we see an underwater city that receives the message. Then the kids see some fish people on the viewing globe. Rita and Goldar are outside with their implosion device, and they've dropped it at the base of the command center, lighting the wick. To be continued. Over the credits, we get a bunch of cut shots from the episode as well as some bloopers. Nothing important, to be honest. This episode is definitely super strange. It's a rough introduction to the miniseries, but it's only one part. So I'm kind of interested to see where they're going. You'd also probably expect that a premiere of a miniseries called Alien Rangers would actually showcase, I don't know, Alien Rangers? I also really don't know how to feel about these child actors. I mean, they're all pretty bad, to be honest, and it's hard to tell if it's because they're genuinely bad or they're being directed to be bad. It's almost frustrating while you're watching it. Also, I did not come to Power Rangers to watch little kid antics, so I kind of hope that we focus more on the Alien Rangers moving forward. So how will this premiere wrap up? Find out in the next episode, but until then, may the power protect you.